friends, we are in Lahore today and it's one of the craziest cities in the country and our goal today is simple. We are wearing Pakistani clothes and we want to see what locals think about it. Are they going to be mad? Are they going to be happy? This guy has now been following us for 15 minutes. I don't know why he's there. Well, just like in every other beautiful place we have visited on our journey so far, days here in Pakistan also start with mornings. But this morning was no ordinary one. Since the only two people we knew in the city had heard about their plans to film in Lahore, they wanted to help us and said with a clever smile on their faces that they will pick us up and give us the first taste of Lahore. The plan sounded great and after 45 minutes of crazy traffic, we arrive in front of some famous restaurant that apparently serves the best breakfast in the whole city. Yet, as we walked in, there was no eggs boiling nor coffee brewing. And we realized quick that what locals took as the best breakfast was a bit of a surprise for us. Goat's legs. And this one is goat's bra brains. <laughs> First time goat's brains. It's very well spiced, even like a bit of sweetness or cinnamon, cardamom, I'm not sure. Like Christmas thing. Did you just call brains Christmassy? I'm vegetarian now. Yeah, now we understood what Ashan and Heather meant by first taste of Lahore. But still, it was nice introduction to the local culture. And with our bellies full of spicy stew, made out of things we never thought we would try, it was time to start discovering this fascinating city. We started our adventure in the greener and the more quiet part of town. We are going to a park, and the park has one very important thing, an erected statue. This famous park is made in a place where in 1947 Pakistan's independence was declared. And to commemorate this important date, there is a statue called Minaret of Pakistan in the center of the park. It was a glorious thing standing in the heart of the park. And as we made our way to this landmark, we quickly realized that although we were dressed like locals, then we didn't blend in as well as we would have hoped. And since we looked intriguing and interesting for the locals, there were suddenly two guys near us, asking for pictures. At this point, we hadn't yet learned that if weird-looking people like us stop, then the crowds around us tend to form fast. In a matter of seconds, there was about 10 people around. Then, suddenly 20. Cameras were everywhere. And darn, we felt like superstars basking and sunbathing in the light of the camera flashes. But we also had our own agenda. We used the moment and got the first glance into what locals thought about us wearing their national clothes. What do you think about us wearing these clothes? Pakistani clothes. Okay. Sorry, not this, but actually that one. What do you think about us wearing Pakistani clothes? Looking very nice. What do you think? Very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. You're looking so handsome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> We were quite surprised for such positive feedback and truthfully even a little bit proud because the clothes seem to bring joy to the eyes of the locals but surely the opinion of some young guys wasn't the whole truth and so we continued discovering the second biggest city of Pakistan. Next up we headed to the historic part of Lahore it's called the Walled City, and it totally deserves its name. Hey. Well, uh, don't you need a proper name? <laughs> no, no we don't. It feels like an open-air museum, full of places both beautiful and holy. We walked in the footsteps of ancient emperors and saw a mosque like no other we had ever seen before. 
We were stunned by the beauty of this place and soon found out that Lahori people have a saying about this that goes like this. The most popular sentence about the Lahoris and the Lahore is Chine Lahore ni takya or Jamiani. In English we could say the one who hasn't seen Lahore, he is not born. <laughs> well, although Lahore tried to distract us with its charm and beauty, we still had a mission. How do you feel if we wear Pakistani clothes? Yes. Beautiful. Most answers were again positive, but there, there was something else, something we didn't fully understand. You are looking for Patan. Patan. What does it mean? When I passing, when I was passing from here, yeah. my, my wife was saying that they are Patans. Yeah. <laughs> they are not foreigners. They are Patans. Yeah. It was intriguing. We just had to find out. Who did they think we looked like? So we just heard from the street that we look like somebody. Who do we look yeah, like? You looks like Patan from the northern <laughs> Pakistan, right? Uh -huh. And uh, ma'am as well also looks like Patani. Yes. Patani is female yes. and for the male is Patan. Yeah. They thought that we look like locals. It sounded weird, but we were excited because so far in my eight years of traveling, the only place I have been mistaken for local is Iceland. We were really excited. Maybe our disguise was actually working and to find it out, we knew just the thing to do. Because you know, if that would work, we would have just discovered a shady travel hack that could save us a lot of money. Because if you haven't been in Pakistan yourself, you should know that ticket prices for foreigners are times higher than for locals. Yeah, I know. That's kind of what happens if you're a tall tourist in Pakistan. Can I take a picture with you? Sure. All of a sudden, our plans for mischief were distracted by this. <laughs> We had made our way outside the historic walled city and as soon as we left the gates, the whole atmosphere changed. There's more than 10 million people living in Lahore and suddenly we felt that all of them were around us. It was true chaos. Salesmen yelling, cars honking their horns and even walking those narrow streets was a challenge by itself. We're just part of the row of tuk-tuks because there's not even half a meter of room for pedestrians. So you have to be part of this crazy traffic. It became obvious that the two kilometer walk through the city to test out their theory of passing as locals was going to be much harder than we anticipated. But instead of fighting it, we decided to embrace the chaos. There was a certain charm to this craziness and even the constant catcalling by local men to take pictures with them didn't seem to bother us much. It was almost like a rhythm. We walked for two minutes, then stopped and took pictures for one minute. Then again walked and pictures, walked and pictures. But one thing was sure, this hustle and bustle was making us hungry. And since it was too early for dinner, we had to find another way. Luckily, Lahore has just the thing for such occasion. And this thing is called lassi, a delicious yogurty beverage made in places with, uh, well, questionable health standards. We ordered two cups for a staggering price of 30 cents per cup. And it was even better than we thought. It's like a very, very, very good milkshake. You know how milk mustache is usually a sign of a very good milk product? Well, in our experience, having a milk eyebrow means that the drink was exceptional. After our little stop, we managed to find some calmer streets. And once again, we were on our way to test out our theory. If two obviously European tourists could be mistaken for Pakistani. But well, like the saying goes, nature does not tolerate an empty space. So it is also true for Lahore. Turns out the empty street wasn't as empty as we had thought. All of a sudden, we found ourselves in the middle of a cricket game. There was many different groups playing and nobody really seemed to care 
that there was cars and bikes trying to use the same roads. I'm not surprised that this building doesn't have windows anymore. In my life, I've heard stories of football being played on the streets of Brazilian favelas. But I never expected to see cricket played in busy downtown streets of Lahore. It just didn't seem safe. But one thing for sure, now I understand much better why and how cricket is the second most popular sport in the world. Anyway, as we stopped to admire the game, we went through our usual routine. First, we created a crowd, took pictures with them, then randomly got interviewed by one of the local news channels. Then, of course, used the crowds for our own good to create this beautiful intro for the video. Welcome to Pakistan! And finally, after doing all of this, the group of people around us had grown so large that we could not handle it anymore. I kid you not, the police actually sent us away because apparently we were blocking the road. And there's once again so many people just wanting to hear what's going on. People are on. watching you like they have found some prayer. Yeah. <laughs> they are like in Using the heat of the moment, we escaped. But well, as you probably understood by now, we did stand out quite a bit. And soon we noticed that someone was following us. Okay, it's a little bit weird. This guy has now been following us for 15 minutes. We had seen him before, but still it felt weird. And since we didn't know how to act, we just did what we had seen on action movies. First we tried to walk faster. So did he. I don't know why he's there. Then we stopped. Yep, he did as well. We even took some shady side streets, hoping to lose him. But sure enough, two minutes later, he was there. He's always there. He's just always there. It's a little bit annoying. As the final result, we went into a mosque and stayed there for a good 20 minutes. Admiring the precise work of the renovators and enjoying the calm and holy atmosphere of the place. Yet, as we went back out onto the streets, only one thing had changed. Our so-called stalker had found a translator. As it turns out, he was near us when we were interviewed and we had taken pictures with his friends, but we escaped before we could take pictures with him. He really liked our clothes, so the poor lad really wanted a picture with us to later show his family. But since he didn't speak a word of English, he decided that the best way would be to follow us for the next half an hour until somebody else asks for picture so that he can then join and have his picture as well. When we looked at the map after this encounter, we realized that luckily we had walked the right way. We were just a few blocks away from the moment of truth. In preparation, I tried to act natural and blend in with the locals. Joe is trying to blend in, but he's like a head taller than the guys. And then it was time. We passed the gate. Classic gate to keep out Joe's. I passed. And made it to the historic Turkish bath. The price for foreigners was almost 10 times higher than it was for locals. And being completely honest with you, for this money, I could actually visit a real hammam and have a good wash instead of a historic one with no water and warmth. Then, Lizu went all in. She tried it again. No, 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 patan, patan. Patan. And the result? Foreigner. A big fat no. And I'll be honest, I was having trouble keeping the laughter down. He wasn't buying it, he was like, no, but then foreigner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> like straight away, he asked for a local ID card. And so, instead of discovering an amazing travel hack, we ended up paying a lot of money to see a place where rich men used to wash themselves hundreds of years ago. I told him I was done. He asked for my ID card. So it almost worked. But you know what? 
after walking out of the Hammam, we were still happy. Yes, our mission to look Pakistani might have failed, but at the same time, it was a 100% success. Because as we found out, this small gesture brought so much joy to the locals. And what else can we wish as travelers than to bring a tiny bit of positivity to every place we visit? Guys, this was our adventure from Lahore. If anybody is wondering, we did not adopt this little guy. He just seems to enjoy our company. He's been walking with us for 20 minutes, not a single word. But <laughs> the whole adventure together was way more intense than I <laughs> thought. We got to see like half of the places that we wanted to see because there was so much going on. But Lisa, what do you think about wearing the local clothes? About the clothes, all of the impressions that we got today were positive and instead of blending in we actually stood out quite a lot but we felt comfortable and we realized that everybody wants good and that was a good feeling. And on this beautiful note it's time to end today's video and I hope to see you guys on the channel next week with some more adventures from Pakistan. Until then, check out that playlist with all of our adventure from Europe to Japan so far and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye! Hello! He was supposed to say bye. Bye! <laughs>